Have a look at that! Oh, it's screaming. That is unbelievable. Oh, a nice hit. Well done! Oh. Look at that! Not a bad sight! Oh, mate. Hi, and welcome to Fishing WA. Today, Ryan, we're in your favourite little spot. Absolutely. King George Whiting, one of my favourites, this mm. time in close. So shallow water, two metres, not 35, 40 metres this time. Yeah. What do you reckon? Are we going to get fish? I hope so. I'm pretty confident. We've got a great show lined up. Let's have a look. Not far from Fremantle, you'll find one of my favourite fishing locations, Coburn Sound. The best thing about fishing in the sound is you don't need a big boat and there's plenty to catch like squid, crabs and the tasty King George Whiting. Armed with 10 pound gear and the Black Magic Whiting Snatcher Rig, I was quietly confident of getting fish. So let's have a look. Oh look at that Ryan. Mate, didn't even get a chance to put the outfit in the water. I know. I was on a sneaky, sneaky. Mate. <laughs> well, it was well worth it, mate. A bit yeah. of a uh, gentleman's hours launch. Wasn't too early. No. Straight down, a, down a here, Southern Flats, bottom end of Coburn Sound. There we go. What is the legal limit of these boys? They're 28, so I'll grab yeah. that off you now. Oh, hang on. He wants to go. Yeah. It's down here. We'll do a quick measure. Yeah. 28 is the legal size, I know. And that one there is actually legal size. Is it? That one there is basically just over 28. Now a lot of people at home might be thinking, well that's quite small compared to what I have put on TV before, but that's offshore King George Whiting. This is inshore, so Bay Estuary, and that's about the right size, normally between 28 and 32. But that's the keeper there, Harry. Why not? Dinner. Dinner. All right, we'll spike it and put it on ice and uh, doesn't get much better than that. I just jumped into your grave. Jumped into my grave? <laughs> you shoved me out of the grave, actually. <laughs> I just went, move out of my I way. was actually still there. <laughs> I'm the presenter. You're the producer. I'm supposed to be catching the fish, not you. Well, How's that, mate? Nice. We just rocked up to this spot. Southern Flats. It's a good spot for squidding. Um, you can get crabs here. And King George Whiting. Look at that. Another one. Yeah. Mate. How's that? Spot turns on straight away, you know it's a good spot. And back at home, you can't say that's not worth a couple of minutes drive down to Southern Flats. Doesn't matter if you launch from Palm Beach, right here, or from Woody's Point like we are. King George Whiting, I reckon that one's legal. I'll put it on the measuring stick. If it is, it's coming home. Okay, now if you're targeting King George Whiting, this one here is coral prawns by Early Bird, my favourite bait. Now the coral prawns come obviously fully shelled. So important to basically rip the head off, use that for burley, get rid of all the shell. Why? Yeah, the whiting will eat it with the shell, but often I'll sit there and I'll keep a mouth in the bait. You don't want that. You want it to actually eat the bait. So get rid of all the shells, the legs left with the sweet part, which is the body of the prawn, nice and fresh. Now I just cut it up, left my cutting board back inside the cab, but this will do for now. Just small little bite-sized pieces. Get this Black Magic rig. Got this KL circle hook. Very small hook. It's got this crystal flash material, red bead to attract um, King George, Sam Whiting, doesn't matter. Great rig. And just put on the peeled prawn. It's very soft flesh, so as soon as you get a bite, so important to basically set the hook. Now this is a circle hook, so it sets itself, but with these fish, I give it a bit of a rod tip, sort of, and I'm in. So that's it, that's the rig. Okay, all baited up. Now it's so important to just not cast to the weed. You've got sand and weed patches. The, the King George and the sand whiting always hang around the sand patches more so. So I'm gonna basically look at the sand patch, put the bait into it, close over the barn arm, now wait. Maybe up to about three, four seconds. No bites, I'll wind in real quick. Why? Because if I don't, the blowy's gonna get onto it. So very important, cast out to the sand patches, bit of weed around, sand, right in the sand hole. Wait three, four seconds, no bites. Wind in quick, recast. If the King George in that little sand hole, they'll hit it straight away, bang, you're gonna be on. 
That way I'm spending more time fishing than de-hooking blowfish. And straight in. Just talking about moving around. Just harrying myself, just constantly yeah. casting. You're on That's as well, it. double. That's it. Just keep on casting around. No sand holes, Harry. Yeah, they're working well. Uh, that one's, that one there's a butterfish. Now, it's oh. a bycatch, same nonetheless, here. not to be discouraged. The butterfish hang around the same sort of area as King George Whiting, so quick de-hook, rebait, back out. To find out more information about Fish and WA or just want to ask a question, like us on Facebook. Well, certainly firing, Harry. It is. Sort of unusual. You rock up to a spot and normally have to wait a few hours before the fish actually start to fire up, but the camera's out and the fish are firing. This doesn't normally go hand in oh. hand. No, it normally doesn't. What have I got here? Double header, is it? Uh, yeah, there you go. One kg. Now, in the same area, obviously, you get blowfish, you get wrasse, you get uh, these ones here, which are butterfish, and also King George, but you can't complain about that, and we're only about a mile and a half off the actual beach. So it doesn't matter if you're in a dinghy or a bigger boat. This sort of fishing, accessible to all. A few tools of the trade. An old uh, t-shirt, nice and wet, so obviously your hands are nice and clean. They can get a bit slimy, and obviously a pair of pliers. Now these KL hooks normally hook them in the corner, but it's a little bit hard, just grab your rag, wet rag at that. Just grab them, they're slimy, and de-hook them. So make sure you got yourself all prepared because normally when they're widening on the bite, you don't be mucking around, spend more time fishing than messing around. I must admit, this sort of fishing is enjoyable. Back in series four, I did it with Steve. I've had so many people come into my shop say, so love that show, King George Whiting. Southern Flats, accessible to all. And only recently Harry said to me, put out a bit of a poll on Fish and WA Facebook page, what do you guys want to see more of? A lot of it was basically bread and butter species and also enclosed fishing, whether being uh, dinghy or kayak, doesn't matter. Well, there you go, it's enclosed, bread and butter species, look at that. A mile or so off the beach, and we're getting into quality eating fish in the same area, you get a lot of squid. So you can get squid, King George Whiting, and also the outskirts. Blue man of crabs, so you can get it all here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Oh, jeez! That's what got have a I reef. Got here. There's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, a little shark. Was it? There you go. My oh, herring, that's a good bycatch to put on. There you go. Another one of the bycatch. That's the best thing at this spot here, Harry. It doesn't matter. Yeah. When people want to come and catch Guardies, Herring, King George, Southern Flats, it's all here for you. Only in about two metres of water, yet so productive. And it's a decent Herring as well, mate. That it is. All right, I'm about to re-rig, so that's my favourite one. That's a Whiting Snatcher by Black Magic. It's fluorocarbon trace line. It's got basically KL circle hooks, so the fish hook themselves. It's got the red bead there, and also the, what they call like tinsel flash off there. So even if it gets the bait taken off, it still produces. So that one there, for King George and Sam Whiting, my favorite rig. Now I'll show you how to attach it. Okay, it comes with the rolling swivel and the two droppers, but nothing at the other end. So I'm gonna attach one of these new extreme cross lock snap, good range of swivels. And just happens I've got one already attached to my sinker. So all I'm going to do at the bottom of this rig is just attach it with a quick uni knot. Three wraps. Pull it up tight. That's the uni knot. And why I've got the clip there is so that I can change over to different size sinkers, lighter or heavier, depending on what depth of water I'm in. All I do now is attach my braid, and that's the setup. I've just done a bimney in my actual braid. That's the extreme braid. Now why do a bimney? Just to thicken up the diameter so it doesn't cut into itself and make it a stronger knot. Braid being thin, you want to thicken up the diameter. So just going to basically do another uni like I did the mono. So you just do a loop like this here and just wrap that through that loop three times. 
being braided, normally I'd probably even go maybe four. It's only a small bit of bimney there. About yay. Pull it. Pull it down tight. So that one there is a bimney. A uni knot. Cut off the tag ends. Just throw that in the bin. Put that on the floor for now. Braid scissors are actually a little bit better, which is that one there. So mono cutter is what I was using before. Braid scissors are better. So braid scissors, mono cutters, and that's it. All connected. Now my outfit, very basic. The extreme two to four kilo rod, six foot six, perfect for sort of chasing whiting with a very soft tip there. That one there's a dollar Caldia reel, 2500 size. The braid is 10 pound extreme braid. Inexpensive, yet effective. So you two back at home can get into fish like I am. Ratfish and WA TV series, you've seen us use the Extreme gear. Let me show you just some of the products. We've got the Extreme PE braid, very well priced. From brim braid all the way through to Jewfish, awesome stuff. We've got the Extreme hooks. From skippy size all the way to Jewfish, snapper, you name it. Ultra sharp, ultra strong. We've got the metal slice, everyone loves metal slice there. From herring all the way up to Taylor salmon size, great product. You always need leader, the Extreme leader from low poundage all the way up to the heavy stuff there for offshore deep water fishing. If you're chasing jewfish or snapper, bolch and groper, the octo jig and the metal jig, all different sizes, different colors, this will get you a lot of reef fish and out of the rods. The Fishing WA Extreme range is huge from squidding to bottom bouncing to trolling to poppering to jigging, you name it, we've got it. Very well priced, ultra light. Check them out at your nearest Extreme Tackle retailers or check them out online, extremetackle.com.au. Well, it's nice that the sun's poked its head out. It's so important with KG fishing to make sure that you're basically putting your baits in the right area, not just on vacant sand or full weed. That's not good. You want the patchy ground, but where I want my baits is where there's basically a sand hole or a little bit of a sand channel ridge. If you put the baits there, that's where the KGs are. That's where I need to be. Right there. I'm gonna have the buttery. They seem to go on a bit quiet, yeah, they, but so we have a nice little feed. Yes. What do you reckon we should do now? Over, but a nice little feed, I agree. Oh, look around here, mate. There's plenty of options. I reckon maybe some crabbing in the deeper water. Oh, and I'm some on. crabbing? A bit of crabbing. Yeah, that sounds like some a plan. Some blue manna. It's probably the yeah. back edge of the crab season, but Coburn Sound always produces, I find. So yep. why not give that a go? Put the nets in and uh, value can't, add to the whiting. Can't hurt. It'd be a good feed, crab and whiting. Oh, nice. Double header. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, herring and King George. We're just saying how things have gone a little bit quiet. Always other options to do, but there you go. Small herring, but a decent King George. That's a keeper. How good is this place? King George whiting doesn't get much better. White, firm flesh, love eating King George. Now basically the inshore bay fishery, they get up to around about say 32 centimetres, then they go offshore. That's where you get the deeper ones. That's where I target them, deeper offshore sort of reefs. But inside the bay here or on Coburn Sound, basically, yeah, up to about 30 odd, but healthy looking fish. Got that mottled sort of uh, brown sort of markings on it. Silver belly there, underslung sort of jaw there to actually sift through the sand and basically pick out worms. Could be sort of prawns, could be anything, basically. Underslung jaw. These fish absolutely woof in prawns, especially pilled prawns. So uh, how good is that? That one there's around about sort of 29, 30 centimetres. Another one for the esky. Just remember, if you're going to put them in the esky, you must put them on ice. I'll show you. All right, the King George tally is building up. Have a look at that in an esky with ice. A little bit of a slurry. Doesn't hurt just to put a little bit extra ice in there. Doesn't matter if it's summer or winter. You must look after your fish. Have a look at that. Those fish now will be at its best. Lovely. This year we are giving away $2,000 worth of Extreme Tackle as well as a Bradley 6 rack smoker valued at $1,200. To enter, all you have to do is like us on Facebook. Alright, it's amazing with these King George whiting when they're in a bit of a patch 
that's all they are in that one area. And right now, back up there, when I first start the drift, they're always on the bite. As soon as I go past that, and even though the patch of ground is still the same, they're schooled up in one area. So, so important, use your GPS, mark where they're biting, keep on going back. Oh yeah, on. I was just talking about that just then to the camera, saying about it's so important to move back over to where you got your, um, your, your first few fish, mark it on your GPS, keep on going back around, and as soon as we set up the drift, just gone past that sand patch just out from us, broken ground, on ski. But what is it? King George, my oh, friend. Oh, man. Isn't that amazing? You're kicking my butt. Mate, redemption. Look at that. I certainly don't get sick of it, eh? Yes, I catch a big King George, but King George is still King George. Doesn't matter. That sun's coming out. This day just keeps on getting better. This is a little bit smaller. You keeping the sminges away from me, mate? Yeah, I'm doing a good job of being a decoy. <laughs> oh, another King George. There's a name for you, Ryan, and it ain't Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at that. This place is just firing. No, only for you, mate. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> just, just for me at the moment. I just love it. Just a fun fish, cast out. If you don't get any bites within three to five seconds, pull it out of the water, recast it, just constantly working it, and that's the result. Cool. This one I reckon is legal size. Look at that circle hook right there. It's a kale circle hook on this Black Magic rig. They hook themselves, hook comes out nice and easy. Quick measure, it's legal, it's coming home. Gotcha. Oh yeah, that's KG. No denying their bite. Oh yeah. Not happy. <laughs> That's why it's so important to have that little tippy rod. These graphite rods are great for all sorts of fishing, whether being squidding or whiting, skippy. Just that tip action, look at that, right there. Oh, it's not a, what is it? Oh yeah. It's a herring, is it? It's a herring. And a buttery. Well, it's certainly not the target species, but good spot to take your kids as well. So they love catching any fish. So King George obviously is a bonus, but to bring your uh, boy or girl out here, catch fish like this, make their day. Yep. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Ting. Oh, what have we got? The beer KG. Yeah, look at oh, that. Nice. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a late comeback, late run. Oh. Mate, you are on fire now. Oh, is it? What is it? How things change. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Oh, it looks like a KG to me. KG. Jeez, man, come back with a vengeance. Mate, you have, about time. Yeah, baby. Very nice. You'll be quite this uh, f first sort of four or five drifts. Now you come back, mate. Yeah. This thing will settle down, be all right. But I'm having a bit of that. Oh. Ugh, I've been slimed. Sorry, I'm just going to go. Yes. Oh, this is a drag go. <laughs> <laughs> we had the brim drag set. <laughs> Means nothing. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's a KG. King George. Well, Ryan, I reckon. That's us. That's us for today, mate. That is us for the day, and I reckon that's the last fish, and that's me catching more than you. And <laughs> I, think uh, <laughs> it's, I think it's about equal now. No, he finally no, no, caught no. up. 
And that's actually quite a nice fat one. That's that actually one. a good fish. Yeah. One of the bigger ones for the session. Yeah, definitely. Well, what are we going to do now, mate? Mate, I reckon uh, time to go back. Oh, there we go. No, 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 no. I've got the last fish, man. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may be able to finish off with a uh, double hookup. Yeah. And I reckon yours is a better fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, these things are really, really slimy, so... I don't know, until next week. We'll see you then. Later.